The world of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is beautiful and terrible and mad. It is perhaps a cliché to point out something so obvious, but even when facing the harshness of nature and the roar of a giant beast intent on seeing you dead, it's humankind that proves the truest monster. Well, this being a fantasy world, you can include dwarf kind, elf kind, and so forth as well. Who dares disturb my divine being? Geralt of Rivia. Pleasure. In this game series' final major chapter, Geralt isn't just plunging his silver sword into Neckers and Drowners. He's also facing harsher truths. There's practically no one you can trust in a world where people are this desperate. Desperate to live, desperate to thrive, desperate for control, desperate for even a tiny sliver of hope amid the constant misery. You will feel their pain. It's hard not to. Physical pain is revealed on characters' expressive faces, many or most of which are crisscrossed by scars. You hear emotional pain in people's cries of suffering and experience it in pleading conversations. Even the simplest killing contracts, which see you slaying, screeching wraiths, and flying behemoths, are not so simple. Those monsters represent the loss of loved ones and the squelching of dreams. The one you abandoned, remember? The writing is both rich and profane, getting you to the heart of every citizen's deep-rooted troubles. And few quests are accomplished in a single step. Murdering monsters isn't just about swinging your weapon, but about revealing the anguish that invited it to dwell. Oh, and it's also about using your keen witcher senses to reveal objects of interest and the scent trails of monsters and witnesses alike. But misery is apparent not just with random citizens of this gigantic and captivating open world, but with Geralt and his returning associates. Triss Marigold is hiding in the city of Novigrad, where mages and their associates are burped at the stake. The bard Dandelion is God knows where, and solving the mystery of his whereabouts is no quick task. You are reunited with former lover Yennefer, who was only mentioned in previous games, and she's as racked by grief as you are by the disappearance of Ciri, the young woman the two of you raised as your own. Ciri is at the heart of this story, though finding her is only part of your primary goal. How awful and wonderful all of these struggles turn out to be. The Witcher 3 is one of the best open-world role-playing games ever made, sullied mainly by the bugs that occasionally intrude. You might break a particular quest by performing tasks in an unexpected order, or run into a hard crash or two, or notice a number of visual glitches. I'd say The Witcher 3 falls within acceptable bounds when it comes to the bugs and occasional performance quirks of a giant open-world RPG, though of course your mileage might vary. But what are these elements in light of such an achievement? It's a lush and terrible world out there, and while icons on your map lure you to them to see what treasures and secrets might be found there, it's the very thrill of discovery that pulls you into the wilderness. Every derelict temple, every circle of worshippers, every cave mouth cries out to be explored, in part because none of these things could be accused of copy-paste design. Sure, the basics boil down to killing, retrieving, and activating your Witcher senses, but even the smallest of adventures have a sense of uniqueness. And the treasures are numerous enough that you look forward to seeing what weapon diagram or hastily scribbled letter you might find, a letter that leads you to even more loot and uncovered secrets. Loot has a huge role to play in the game thanks to the high degree of customization of your armor and in your weaponry. Different armor sets in particular are a joy to uncover, making Geralt look more and more hardened as you progress. The Witcher 3 also benefits from its hugely expanded potion system, which allows you to quaff potions during combat, though of course Witcher potions are dangerous and Geralt can only have so many in effect before he succumbs to their toxicity. Suffice it to say that the game is huge. I spent close to 100 hours with The Witcher 3, yet my map was still loaded with stuff to do, and luckily you get the chance to pursue those quests and monsters after the credits roll. Of course, big isn't necessarily a good or a bad thing, it's just a thing. But this world is aching with violent beauty, begging you to take in every nook. The joy of exploration is furthered by the game's perfect content balance, providing you with icons to chase while still allowing other surprises to appear organically. In this way, both you and the world get to breathe, and the intrigue builds naturally. 
Every quest is a story of sadness or triumph waiting to absorb you, asking you to make decisions that change the landscape in small and large ways. You won't always know what the consequences are. Some decisions have noticeable game-altering repercussions, while others barely divert your gaze. But the consequences are there, and you often notice them, even though the game doesn't go out of its way to call them out and force you to admire them. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful, but everything I had, I just lost. You need to pull out both your steel and silver swords from time to time, whether to fight off bandits or bruisers of the political factions you piss off, or to destroy the incredible looking monsters that plague the land. The Witcher 3's combat is more fluid than The Witcher 2's, and the branching upgrade paths make magical signs far more important and enjoyable to perform than before by diversifying and altering their behavior. The game is also noticeably easier than its predecessor, and because it's so easy to outlevel story quests by getting caught up by side quests and monster contracts, you should probably consider choosing a difficulty setting one notch higher than you normally would. But even when things get easy, the combat is always satisfying due to the crunchiness of landing blows, the howls of human foes scorched by your igni sign, and the fearsome behavior of necrophages, wandering ghosts, and lumbering werewolves. The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt is incredible. It may be filled with non-humans, but it tells a remarkably human story even as the world's politics bubble and burst around you on scales both big and small. Where The Witcher 2 sort of sputtered to a halt, The Witcher 3 is always in crescendo, crafting battle scenarios that constantly one-up the last. And in between those battles, you get caught up in the heartbreaks and the triumphs, and the never-ending conflict between the sacred and the profane. That a video game can capture the violence of battle is no surprise that it can so movingly depict the life-shattering tragedies and messy opportunities that arise in vicious times is The Witcher 3's greater victory.